Yeah, I want to get to the issue of motivation, say something about motivation. But I think uh, on the Alzheimer's and reasonable and discursive rationality and so forth, I have a certain view as to how I would want to be treated if I were an Alzheimer's patient, and I w would want to be treated with dignity and it rough, roughly in the way that the better nursing homes do in fact take care of Alzheimer's patients. But we both know that there are other people in our society who, who would not want to be treated like that, who would in fact want to be allowed to commit suicide. Um, and, and many of these people have reflected seriously about this. It's, it's, the, it's the result of discursive rationality on their part. It's not some gut intuition, but they've given long thought to it and so forth. So my difficulty is that some people just don't accept the golden rule, but maybe more relevant, and maybe some whole societies don't, more relevant is when we get down to the nitty gritty of how I would want to be treated, there is in lots of very important cases no, no consensus as to how we would want to be treated. On the issue of motivation. Can, can I just intervene yeah. quickly? Yeah, but I mean, to me, there would be certain questions of how I would want not to be treated. You know, well, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean to, me, right. the, to me, those are the salient ones. You know, whether uh, a person with Alzheimer's should be morally permitted, wh whether legally or whatever is another matter, but morally permitted to commit suicide, uh, that's some, somewhat different than saying, uh, it should be permissible for society to decide that, that they can be uh, uh, put to death and dispensed Yes, no, with. these are yeah. two different cases. Yeah, the, 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 these the are Alzheimer's cases. The, I think the golden the rule... The suicide case is even more dramatic. Yeah. The golden rule w w would, I think, be applicable to uh, not just treating this person as someone who is... Uh, you know, useless and dispensable and so on. You know, then, you know, beyond that, what, what range of reasonable moral options would exist? I mean, I, I'm not sure that uh, it would be necessary for my golden rule account to say that suicide would be impermissible, even if I myself, like you, w would feel that uh, it's not permissible. But there, I think I'm not operating on the basis of merely golden rule considerations. Yeah, no, right. So, so uh, it's, it's more a matter of uh, preventing abuses than it is a matter of finding you know, optimal solutions for uh, proper treatment in, in difficult cases. The, the point I'm emphasizing there is the, the variability in how people would want to be treated were they in the, in the, in the same sort of situation as the person in front of them doesn't, tr doesn't track to the to the universality of human rights and personal rights. But let me, let me say a word about motivation. Okay. Um, you mentioned Michael Perry. Yeah, yeah Perry's got the view that even, even when I've established and persuaded you that this person has dignity, I have to do something more yet to motivate you to do anything about it. And here he becomes a eudaimonist. I've got to show that my honoring your dignity somehow conduces to my own well-being. And I know Michael very well. He, he, he just, he's Catholic, though he's not deeply embedded in the Catholic tradition, but he's just bought into the eudaimonist part of the Catholic moral tradition. And I just don't see it, it seems to me, that if, if I've shown that you have dignity, I don't have to do, I don't then have to do some additional thing to, uh, to energize you to do something about it. One, one, I mean, if you acknowledge that I have dignity, I don't have to do some additional thing to show that it con honoring it conduces to your flourishing. I think establishing the goodness of something is often sufficient motivation for, sufficient argument for people to honor the goodness. I agree. If, if, I, if I say this is a really good symphony, I don't have to say in addition, you're gonna be really happy listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most yeah. people will say, well, then I want to listen to it. Right, right. I mean, I, I think, you know, along with the idea of rationality or what you could reasonably expect, uh, there's some sort of principle of non-contradiction. See, it would be contradictory to expect a certain kind of treatment in my own case that I'm not prepared to extend to someone else. So, yeah, it would be a, a kind of treatment that uh, would be extended to others and you mean whether I would really be motivated uh, to, to act on these principles is, is a somewhat separate question but whether I could uh, reasonably deny that 
uh, others are entitled to the same kind of treatment that I expect for myself, uh, I, I couldn't. I mean, I, I think that's what the golden <coughs> rule is about. I, I think that's its intuitive uh, appeal. You know, I mean, in, in the parable of Jesus about, I think it's called the unjust steward, where he's been uh, forgiven a great debt, but then he won't forgive uh, the debt uh, of someone uh, that someone owes to him that, that's much smaller. And people see right away that uh, he's acting in a way that's inconsistent with uh, uh, how he has been treated and uh, uh, that, that this is uh, kind of hypocritical and self-contradictory. So, I mean, within those limits, I think you can get a rough and ready, good enough grounding for some sorts of human rights. And that's all I'm saying. You know, it, it's, it's really a rather modest claim, I, I think. And, uh, yeah, rights of humans and rights of persons, you know, you know how to deal with uh, uh, Alzheimer's patients and, and what, you know, could you allow for a person to commit suicide in uh, difficult situations where they're terminal anyway and uh, you wouldn't do that yourself? I mean, I, I'm not sure the Golden Rule would have much to say there, nor did, would it need to have much to say in order for my account to uh, hold up reasonably well. Nick, let me, let me press one point uh, that George raised and uh, um, see what your thoughts about it. So um, when, if you add a rationality bit to the, to the golden rule like this, you say, uh, the golden rule tells us that I'm obligated uh, to treat you in a way that I would uh, rationally want to be treated were I in your situation. And if you have a thick enough conception of rationality so that uh, uh, what's what's rational to desire uh, isn't just any old thing. It's it's uh, what's proper to our design plan, given the way God has built us, or something like that. Could you could you get around some of the variability worries that you're raising, where people have all kinds? Well, of you can get around some of it, uh, and I suppose you can thicken rationality so much that uh, that the results become sort of necessary analytic. But, but take the two people involved in the banking profession. The one thinks that there ought to be minimal regulation. The other thinks, no, 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 human beings are too fraught, too, uh, too greed, too inclined to greed, and too inclined to let the lure of profit obs obscure their rationality. And we need, we need a lot of regulation. So each one has a view as to how they would want to be treated. They and others, I mean, they're willing to universalize it. Absolutely, so, so it's not a violation of the universality principle, but very different views as to how they would want to be treated. And I would think that both of them are, I mean, it's likely that both of them are fully rational. They've thought about it, they've argued it out with each other. It's gonna be very difficult to point to one and say, you're being you know, non-rational, irrational, irrational, whereas you're fully rational without just being arbitrary in one's assignment of the epithet rational. Well, first of all, the banking case is not a human rights case, it seems to me. And secondly, well, uh, it might be. I don't think that. Uh, but let that pass. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that this is an unresolvable question. I mean, the, there's a lot of evidence that things go wrong when what is it, the Glass Steagall bill, or yeah, you know, when that's waived. You know, I mean, we're, we're in this financial crisis because regulations were lifted. I, mean, I know, but Jamie Dimon knows this evidence even better than you and I do. Yeah, and of course he's up for criminal charges. You know, I mean, he, he, uh, he, he's not uh, uh, sort of a credible witness. Uh, when, when, I mean, he, he's, he's like the, uh, uh, the, the person with some disorder who tells, about, tells us about how he would like to be treated. You know, uh, uh, we may not be able to convince him or, or a large number of other people, but the people have interests here uh, I in terms of uh, how they would like to be treated, which will give them an, an advantage in society over against a, a, a large majority, maybe the vast majority of others. I mean, I, I think on the basis of, you know, kind of Kantian rational grounds, uh, you know, th these people could be censured. Well, uh, Nick, did you have a, a concluding uh, thought before we... Not really, um, though, <laughs> though of course the Jamie Diamonds of the world are going to go off into a riff, uh, riff to the effect. Yeah, but all this regulation stifles creativity. 
It's not greed we're after, it's creativity, imagination, stifles imagination, creativity. That's the riff that they tell. And so it eventually becomes comes down to a matter of Aristotelian phronesis. What, what, is, what is judgment? Ju judging these countervailing values, what does judgment say? And I happen to think that Glass-Siegel regulation, but I don't think the other view is stupid. Uh, no, but it, you know, these people who are, mistaken, are, <laughs> are, you know, who are telling us that they need to unleash creativity uh, aren't ending up in the poorhouse. No. You know, I mean, the, the, no, the, we, we might, I, but I, they I, won't. I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I think we have grounds for suspicion here, uh, uh, you know, an, an appeal to creativity. Uh, I mean, they're getting awfully rich at the expense of uh, most of the rest of us. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.